Thank you, Neil. Uh, Neil, do you have any updates from any of the projects? Okay, maybe not. Oh, yeah, okay. We will wait for Neil to get his audio Hello? sorted out. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, I got a weird, I got a really weird setup here. Uh, I'm hearing you through my computer, and I'm talking through my headset. So, <laughs> I, I, amazing <laughs> talent there. Um, yeah, just a quick thing that we uh, released the RCO ten, Sakai 10.5 RCO2. That's our second release candidate for um, 10.5. It is um, so we could use help QA testing. We're hoping to finish up QA testing by next Tuesday and probably do the release uh, next week. Um, 10.5 has um, 117 bug fixes, something like that. So it's a you know it's a nice, healthy uh, maintenance release. Excellent. Well, congratulations and thanks to everyone who helped um, make that happen um, so quickly. That's great. And obviously, QA testing needs to happen. So um, thanks for that update. And I saw that uh, through some of the lists that the um, there is a UX community now. Um, Wilma, I don't know if you're yeah, um, we're trying to organize an interest group meeting for UX um, testing and um, just, you know, UX, UI design in general. So I had put out a doodle poll on the user list and we're going to meet um, next week just to kind of touch base with some of the folks who are interested in being involved. So hopefully we can get kind of a regular um, meeting set up and, and help to further some of the various UX um, efforts that are underway because I know um, I'm hel helping uh, Louisa do some stuff with um, with the Leap UX testing. We're going to be looking at a couple of wireframes and designs um, and then we're also hoping to do some additional um, UX testing for other tools as they are developed. So, Fantastic. And I see Louisa just posted details about next week's meeting on the chat. Um, so take a look at that and uh, plan to attend if you can. And Neil, I, I'm guessing that people who want to help with QA testing who don't already know particulars could reach out to you for the 10.5 release. Okay, Neil, we can't hear you, so um, not sure if you're. Oh, okay, Lars, you have a question. Do you want to come on the mic? Go ahead. Uh, actually, I don't have a question. I thought at this point I might give a short update about the OpenCast project because uh, we also released uh, the OpenCast 2.0 release candidate one last Friday. So I uh, hope to get 2.0 out in the next one or two weeks. Right. I think you're on the agenda for um, July 15th. Does that still work for you? That will work, yeah. Okay, fantastic. Thank you for that reminder. Anybody else have any announcements or updates? Okay, Neil, you're back on. Good, thanks. Okay, um, well, I think we're ready to move on to our main event, uh, which is to hear Dr. Chuck Severance um, teach us a little bit more about LTI and um, all the interesting and cool things that are going on with that in the community and um, in the world at large. Um, so Dr. Chuck, thank you so much for joining us and uh, we eagerly anticipate what you have to say. Thanks. Uh, are, are you hearing me okay? Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. Um, so what I was going to do today is I was going to talk for about 15 minutes and sort of just kind of cover a bunch of stuff really fast and then open it up for questions. Um, and so uh, let me, uh, am I the, uh, could you make me the presenter so I could share 
a part of my screen. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. Give me a second. Uh, there you go. You should have. I do. Privileges now. Okay. Let's see if it will let me share. Hello. Oh, it's Chrome again. I have to vanish. Oh, to oh joy. I have to vanish and reappear. I shall okay. return. It'll only take okay. me a moment. Bye. No problem. Yeah, Chrome, Chrome, when you're screen sharing, they, they drop support for Java applets, and that's why oh, uh, you can't use the Chrome browser. Um, so the big blue button uh, folks are working on, uh, yeah, the big, I, I like Chrome, but it doesn't work for that, uh, the big, personally, but the big blue button folks um, at Blindside Networks, uh, they, I think they're working in an alternative way to, um, you know, to have the screen sharing. So, but I'm not sure their exact timeline. Gotcha. Goodness. Okay, I see Dr. Chuck is back online, and I've made him the presenter again. So, are you with us? Yep, I'm getting set up. Okay. Great. Okay, so now let me try this again. I'm going to share part. Try to share part of my screen so I don't waste too much of your space on everybody's screen, region. How does it share a region? Allow. OK. Neil, do you have any tips for Dr. Chuck to get it to share? It's working. Oh, okay. There we go. There it is. I don't do this very often. So are you seeing a screen that says standards update? Yes, indeed. Yay. Okay. <laughs> Success. So I'm doing this only for three slides. So, um, the standards in uh, IMS are right now in a, a almost a fever pitch. Um, uh, you know, LTI one has been around for a long time. People are kind of grumpy about its limitations, and so we have been fiercely building uh, new implementations. And LTI 2.0 is really past the tipping point. Um, with uh, Moodle and Sakai, are the uh, have LTI 2.0 in the wild. Uh, there's not a lot of LTI 2 tools out there. Uh, Canvas is uh, hot on the heels of an LTI 2 implementation. The same with Desire to Learn, but both Desire to Learn and Canvas found what they considered weaknesses in LTI 2.0, not really security holes, but like practices that they wanted done better. And so LTI 2.1 is like um, a, a, a nice cleanup of LTI 2.0. And it's likely that LTI 2.1 will be the first thing that Desire to Learn implements, and Canvas will only allow limited functionality for tools that only do LTI 2.0 and only allow full functionality with 2.1. So 2.1 is going to be sort of the, the really the real winner here in this. Um, the big thing are Split Secret, which addresses a security concern that folks had, same with SHA-256 signing, and re-registration allows secrets to be updated via web services in a secure manner. The next thing that's exciting is the content item, and this, of course, is featured uh, heavily in Canvas, where you click on a little button in your text editor and in comes a nice little block of stuff. The IMS content item is in public draft. Um, it was not the content Canvas's proprietary content item. It was based on it, but Canvas has to re-implement it, and they're working on re-implementing it. There is a lot to content item, and so, uh, after we get 2.1 kind of out the door, we're going to sit down and pick and choose the pieces that we LMSs, that'll be mostly Canvas, Moodle, and Sakai, sitting down and saying, okay, this, this is what we'll do first, second, and third. Um, Caliper, which is the uh, an analytics, is uh, nearly public draft. That will uh, cause a whole bunch of things to happen 
uh, once that goes to public draft. And then after LTI 2.1 goes to public draft, we will progress a set of roster services, which allows tools to get the full list of people in sites and outcomes where the tools will be allowed to create whole new gradebook columns that belong to them and put grades in them. So these are kind of, this is the dream situation for the standards where all of a sudden this will go from, you know, where the world is mostly using LTI 1.1 to in a year and a half, this is, there's gonna be a lot of LTI out there. And this is both a great news and it just means a lot of work is gonna happen. Inside of Sakai, uh, I have been focusing my, um, I've been building now for two years, LTI 2.0 and now LTI 2.1, and I consider it part of my responsibility to, um, part of my responsibility to be the first or the second with any new standard to help in the validation. Uh, the disadvantages are you sometimes have to implement something twice the advantage is that you're the first person that goes through certification, and so they're watching all the logs while you're going through certification, and so you know that you're going to be certified. It pays off in the certification. So uh, Sakai at this point is the first LTI 2.1. Um, at this point, even though the spec won't be finished, the draft code will be in Sakai 11, and then if there's a patch afterwards, we'll, we'll tweak it up. I've got the content item started. I know there's a lot of interest in that. Uh, Sakai 11 may have a partial implementation, but probably not the thing that you want, which is integration with the editor. Um, and so I'll, I'll have put in all of the underlying plumbing for content item and tool registration and all that stuff. And um, there is one use case that I probably will have, and that is the notion that you launch a tool and in, during a picking um, mode, and you get back a link instead of just the tool. The tool sort of the, it goes into picker mode and you say, I'd want one of those things and then it comes back. So I think I might be able to make that work in lessons, but it probably uh, it may end depending on if I get that really going, um, uh, Adam Marshall of uh, Oxford is very hot on, if I get the basic plumbing in place for content item, he's got somebody working on the editor. So, um, and, and so, so we might work on that together, okay? Um, so um, I'm seeing a question. So content item is, content item is basically a way to do an LTI launch that launches a resource picker rather than actual launching of a tool. Okay, that's, that's really what it is. And um, not, no, content item is not content packaging, Ian. Not at all. No, no, no. Content item is a, a resource picker. So, so can I um, ask a follow-up question about the content item? So, a resource picker would be to um, uh, some LTI tool that produces some kind of content, or or is a repository for content is. Well, yeah, the, the best way to think about it is, um, let's say uh, you had a video server, right? And you would log in, and so you'd be authoring a course in lessons, and you'd say, you know, add video from video server. And at that point, uh, lessons would bring up an iframe and launch the video server via LTI, telling the video server not to actually serve up a video but the survey picker interface where you would scroll through or search and whatever. And at the end of that, you would go, yes, that's the one I want. And then you'd say, choose. And then that iframe would sort of vanish and then something would be sent back to lessons and then it would automatically be populated with something in lessons that goes right to a deep link, right to the resource that you pick. I mean, the, the simplest equivalent in Sakai is where you're doing an attachment and you're kind of navigating through, you you say attach, and it says, do you want to attach a resource? Do you want to attach this, that, the other thing? Do you want to upload a new file? And you navigate through and finally go, yep, that it, that's the thing I want to attach, and then that little attachment window vanishes. It's exactly the same as that, except it's happening outside of Sakai and the communicating communication is happening over web services going back and forth. So, yeah. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, so I'd like to get that to the point where we have basic picking 
um, inside of lessons, where when you say add external tool in lessons, one of the things you can do instead of manage external tools, you can just go to a place like a Kaltura picker, right? Say, oh, add Kaltura video, and you just boom, you go into Kaltura and you pick your thing, you say that one, and then whoosh, should be done, and it might be in your lesson. So, but the and and the, what people really want then is to have a little button, like Kaltura button on the editor that launches a picker, and then when you're done, you say choose, and then in your editor, you've got some little square that says video will go here, and it's already got the video pre chosen. So, so that's content item. I, I have code. There'll be some content item code in 11. I don't know how far I'm going to get with it. Um, my LTI 2.1 code is my higher priority, and, and, but that's nearly done. So I'm actually working on that this morning. Um, the other thing that I will probably have done for Sakai 11 is the, um, the external tools of, um, administration user interface with that sort of big blue box that goes back and forth. Um, and it's also the user interface that happens in lessons when you say add external tool. Um, and when you say add external tool, that actually is redirecting to um, the same velocity tool that is um, the same velocity tool that is being used um, when you're under site info uh, external tools. And so if you get to that and you start using lessons a lot, that gets to be a really ugly looking interface because I got this big list at the top and with things and then I got a big list at the bottom with radio buttons and then the link that probably is the most important link is buried way at the bottom of the screen called manage external tools and you can get yourself all messed up. So, oh, looking at my left shoulder. You're right, I didn't tighten my thing. There we go. Camera moved, okay. Thanks. So. That's what I'm sort of aiming for 11 is LTI 2.1, clean up that UI, make it a little bit prettier. Um, right now, it, the paging is terrible. It does paging in the browser, which means if you have 100,000 LTI tools in your system, it actually loads them all in the browser and pages them in the browser. So I got to fix that. So that'll, that's sort of my 11. And, um, and then the last thing I'll talk about is this thing, um, I don't, I need to, um, there we go. I didn't have her done yet. So, so Tsugi is my little um, sort of bridge between uh, Sakai and IMS and to make it so that tools can, um, tools can be written that really make powerful use of all these new specifications with, by only talking to an API, basically. And um, I started this about two years ago with this PHP Tsugi, um, which I also used in a workshop at, I've, I've used it in lots of places. It's very mature. It's really easy to install. It's, it's sort of a rip off of Moodle and its installation pattern. Um, it's the first client that I know that does LTI 2.1. Um, and um, I'm, I'm sort of at the point where I'm gonna refactor Tsugi into Tsugi 2.0 where right now Tsugi 1.0 is this big blob of stuff that's got everything. It's a hosting environment, it's a testing environment, it's a key management environment, and it's like nine tools that all come out. And it's just like this big blob of stuff and I gotta break those into separate pieces. Um, my job at Tsugi, which I just finished over the last couple of weeks, is already factored into separate APIs and implementations and the tools are not mixed with those things so that you can actually say, you know, I just want to build a tool. I don't want to drag along your whole uh, user interface. And so the, the Java Tsugi is uh, very mature. I started Java Tsugi after the Aperio conference when I did the workshop. And um, it was really clear that nobody in the room wanted to write any PHP code. And I was like, hey, I'm ready for you to write PHP code. So I just went and built a library that was a Java version of it that's totally compatible with the PHP version of it. And it's really pretty and it has like super awesome, um, hang on, has super awesome Java, Java doc already. Show you that. So, I mean, it has to be cool if it's already documented, right? So there it is. So there's like, this is the Java doc for my Sugi Java project, and I'm hoping that some people will actually start developing using 
this API, there's a con, you know, for the cloud, there's all these, there's, there's even documentation on this stuff, which is completely unlike me to actually write documentation. And so, um, so that's the Java Sugi. And one of my goals of Java Sugi is that it, it becomes a way to write um, tools that can either be externally hosted in a Tomcat by themselves or actually be run right inside the Sakai JVM. And, uh, and so I even have a, a early version of a, a Sakai implementation of the Tsugi APIs that I just showed you. And um, I may in 11 put down some experimental things to make that ready to go when I'm done. I don't, it's not gonna be finished. But the, I, my idea is, is that people, if they really wanna start building tools, start with this Java Sugi stuff. And then I promise that eventually we'll be able to plug those exact same tools into Sakai with a deep integration as compared to an LTI2 integration. They could plug into Sakai with an LTI2 integration or plug into Sakai with a deep integration. So that is that is all I have. Um, and I wanted to leave time for questions. And uh, so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll leave presentation on in case the questions refer, need to me to refer to a slide, but I will go back over to Big Blue Button and take a look here. Okay. So, Dr. Chuck, um, I, I didn't post any questions in the chat, but I have a question about the SUGI and the deep integration, and I wondered if you could give us an example of something that we might look forward to with that is will have that deep integration. Well, so SUGI is all about building a tool, right? And um, and so if you look in the comments, Laura is mentioning that I'm working with a uh, a student named Alex Cow, uh, and he is working on a poll everywhere tool, and he's trying to use Java Sugi. His job is actually to see where it doesn't work, right? So he's sort of my first customer of a product that I just finished last week, and uh, so if he does that, that means that we will have like a bridge between LTI and Poll Anywhere, um, Poll Everywhere, and it could be hosted separately, or if I get my little Sakai bridge built, you could actually drop the code right into Sakai and compile it and deploy it into a running Sakai and not have to run it separately. So it could be just another tool in a Sakai instance. Wow, that's very cool. Well, and it's, yeah, the whole idea is um, to make it so we build tools that don't only run in Sakai. One of my other dreams is to build a, use, Java Tsugi to build a gateway to XWiki, right? And um, that would be amazing. Yeah, that'll be a monster too. But it'll be a test of my my thing. So um, I would love to do that, and I I'm going to be working on that one way or another over the summer. Um, I'm not going to I'm not even going to start that until after we've kind of code frozen for Sakai 11 and all my Sakai 11 deliverables are done. Um, and so that'll probably be early July that I'll, I will, my sprint for finishing up for Sakai 11 will be done by early July. Um, uh, Ruben, a uh, bridge between Sakai and Sugi. Sugi, oh, there goes my phone. Okay, that shut that off. Uh, it's a bridge between Sakai and Sugi. So, but Sugi is just uh, Sakai APIs. Uh, let me, it basically means that Sakai Sugi means that this particular set of APIs that I have built, this set of APIs that I've built, like that tell you. Zero four nine four. Our hot summer clearance event is uh, now through June thirtieth. Take up to eight thousand. And so this is an API. For example, this is a way to talk to the grading uh, grading service. For a launch, if a, if a launch has a grade. And I'll make it so that these APIs, this whole org SUGI API, works in Sakai. So that if you write code and um, a SUGI code, a SUGI servlet, um, what the heck is that? Let me show you one more thing. And so here's a little servlet. And 
this is code that uses the SUGI API. So you see, um, you know, import the SUGI APIs, do a launch, call a SUGI factory to get at SUGI, you do a launch, and then you do things like find out what the title of the course is, find out what the user's email address is, find out whether they're instructor or whatever. And so this is a set of APIs that you write a simple servlet. This whole servlet, this whole Tsugi servlet is 173 lines of code. And, um, and the idea is, is that I will make it so that you could drop this WAR file in and these APIs will not, will be provisioned in Sakai. They won't be the same as, they won't be the same as uh, where this JDBC implementation which is um, next package, next package. So I have a JDBC implementation, and that is for standalone, so that this Atsugi application can provision to talk to a simple database, and that's how you run it standalone. But when I do it in Sakai, these same APIs, these same Sugi APIs will be a very different implementation, and that means it's a Sakai implementation. I don't know if I answered that right or not. Okay. So when I mean, so Jeff, uh, you dropped a price. Okay. Um, so Jeff, when you say partial implementation content item in Sakai 11, do you mean lessons but not CK editor? Yes. Yes. And is it, I'm so excited about this feature that my teeth hurt. Yes. But in all situations, <laughs> you first have to make plumbing work before you make user interfaces work. Right? So, so plumbing means there's a hole in fat your bathroom floor. The user interface means there's a toilet that's attached to the hole. Uh, on the bathroom floor, basically, um, and so, so yeah, I, I, I would love to, and that's why I'm working this morning on. Um, I'm a great fan of toilets too. Um, I think that they're a better users or experience model than uh, ATM machines. I was just using an ATM machine yesterday, and I thought, you know, for all the work that's gone on in UI to redesign ATM machines, they still are terrible. I mean, I just cannot know where the. I mean, they just keep redesigning them, and they get worse. Every time they come up with a better one, they get worse. But that we're not here to talk about ATMs. Um, and so I've got to get the plumbing work. I've got to get the data models up, adapted to know about content item. I've got to get the library code that like launches content items and gets the stuff back. And then once I've got that going back and forth, then we can um, then we have then then we can start looking at the editor and how to best put it into the editor. So that'd be nice. Because you got things like what do you put visually in the rectangle as preview? You got to launch the thing as a dialog box. How do you really do it? So, so we'll figure that out. I'd love to have it. It's a killer interface. I just don't think it's going to make 11.0. So, Dr. Chuck, we had a couple of other questions that scrolled off the chat screen. I'm going to ask people to. Um, well, you can answer Laura's question then first, and I'll find the other questions. This all leads to the question, why do we care? Uh, because the answer will hurt, makes Jeff teeth hurt even more. Well, um, there's a number of different dimensions for why do we care. Um, uh, I care because I want the world to have a way of building super awesome infinite number of tools without using proprietary plugins, right? I would like to make it so that in the future we could be building um, we could be building a pull anywhere tool that is as useful in Canvas as it is in Sakai, um, and so that if we're thinking about a Perio, we could have a a pull anywhere uh, work uh, you know group that was a peer to Sakai, and uh, there might be you know a bunch of people from Sakai schools, a bunch of people from Moodle schools, and a bunch of people from Canvas schools that are all committing to the code for that. And so that's sort of uh, my um, grand thing. I mean, ultimately the the other, that's a beautiful free dream to me too, Neil. And there, I mean, I just kind of keep questing after the dream. I mean, there's some tactical issues, right? Um, the tactical issue is, you know, Canvas has some proprietary things that look sexy, don't function very well, but look very sexy. And um, and so 
we need to match um, uh, we need to match what they're capable of doing, but except except we're going to do it right, and then they're going to do it right as well, and that's when really good stuff happens. So there was a, an earlier question about, um, you were talking about QD. Sorry, I missed that. I had my, my, my okay. landline okay. rang, and I want to take the dang battery out of it, because <laughs> there's nothing useful on this landline that ever happens except annoying interruptions on meetings. So exactly. say what you said again. Same here. Uh, there was an earlier question uh, when you were talking about SUGI about what will I be able to do after implementation that I cannot do now? And I think you have spoken to that a little bit, but I don't know if you want to add anything. Well, I, I think it really comes down to uh, one of uh, resource investment of organizations. I mean, I, in order to create lots of people building lots of things, if I was to try to, to to beat the bushes in the universe to say, let's build a Sakai tool for poll anywhere, right? Let's get somebody to write some velocity or wicket or whatever and get somebody to come to the Sakai boot camp and convince management that they should give us a free developer for a year to build a poll anywhere tool for Sakai. I think that management would likely say, no, that's a lot of work and someone else will do it. I'd love to have it, but let's have someone else do it. But if I could go convince that same management to build a tool that can work in Sakai, Moodle, and who knows what, and maybe even they'll start a little company later on this tool, who knows what, right? But it'll work in all these systems at the same time. Um, then I think I convince people, I can convince people to bring us resources. Um, and so that that's sort of my, my goal with Sugi is to make it so that it's worthwhile to invest developer resources in building some awesome things that if you were only going to build them for Sakai or only going to build them for Moodle or even only going to build them for Canvas, you might not get the right kind of people together to build a gadget. So we build this super awesome gadget for everybody. And so I think if we're, if we're going to build this ecosystem, we have to make the ecosystem easy to work in and we've got to make it so that the ecosystem is a democracy. Meaning we can't say, oh, we're going to build a Sakai ecosystem or there's going to be a Moodle ecosystem or a Canvas ecosystem. Those things already exist and they're not adequate. They're not, they're not adequate at all. Those who build, um, you, you mentioned Ocelot, right? So Neil mentioned Ocelot. Uh, you're absolutely right. This is like Ocelot, except that Ocelot was just for building blocks and it didn't go very far because of that. Because you just, no one would implement just to a building block and that community wasn't actually interested all that much in innovative things whereas I think our community is more interested in innovative things than either Moodle or Canvas and so but there will be people from Moodle and Canvas that are interested in innovation so we can come up with something that lets all those communities work together then that's what for me charges up innovation and it you know it it, it keeps us I mean, I, I, I wanted to have a Sugi uh, workshop at the Canvas uh, conference. That would be like awesome if I did that. And, and, um, and I almost had that happen. And then I couldn't go to the Canvas conference because of personal reasons. Um, but also a Canvas person left that was going to like plug me into that. But even this time next year, if, you know, Sakai and Canvas both do LTI2 really well and Sugi is the, I mean, what's going to happen? Let me go back here to this. What's going to happen is about this time next year when all these services are like rocking and rolling, um, no one is, everyone is going to say like, whoa, and then I got to implement this and I got to implement that and I got to implement the other thing. So like Hymas content item, what about the tool? The tool needs to also implement content item. The LMS does too. Which tool really wants to read the document and figure this out? Well, I'll make Sugi no content item. I'll make Sugi no caliper. I'll no, make Sugi no roster services, and I'll make Sugi no all these things. And if he, those who started with Sugi can just get a brand new API at that point, they'll be just, come back, where'd you hide? Wow, what happened to my thing there? Oh, oh it's, uh, it, that arg. come back. Okay, where did that go? Where 
my PowerPoint go? My, I've got you sitting. So, um, you know, if I go to uh, Org Sugi over the overview here, if I go to Org Sugi, you can see that all this stuff down here is like LTI, 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 and then there's a caliper one. Well, what if there's, and I can build a new API right now. If you look at the caliper API, it has nothing in it because caliper is not even a public spec yet, right? But, you know, in two months, maybe I can get Anthony convinced to write for Sugi a caliper implementation, right? So those people who've chosen to use Sugi can just dive into caliper and then the, the result, the outcomes service can show up as a thing. The, the roster can show up as a thing and these things can just grow and grow. There's a settings service, right? Here is the settings service. Do you wanna really write the code for a setting service? Or do you wanna just say set the settings or update the settings or call a, call a thing? Do you really care what the JSON looks like? And the answer is no, you don't. And God, I, I have an API for you. Then I got. Hey, Dr. Chuck. Yeah. Uh, in the chat, there's a just a basic overview question of can you de can you define caliper for us? Yes. So um, caliper is a uh, set of standards <laughs> that allow. Um, event like highly detailed event data to be moved interoperably between uh, LMSs, tools, and uh, learning record stores. And so for us, it's sort of like uh, a standard version of site stats. So site stats inside Sakai, as things happen inside Sakai, data gets sort of sucked off and put in activity data goes is stored, right? But site stats is not interoperable. It only works with Sakai and Canvas has another thing. And so there's no standard for this stuff. There is a standard called XAPI, which is sort of the precursor to Caliper. And uh, let me see if I'm following um, not just XAPI and Caliper, but the intent or the, the bigger picture. So if I'm following you correctly, then I have a third party tool that right now the, the um, data is in the third party tool. Am I right in assuming that this standard allows the third party tool to, um, to do something different with the data rather than take it back to itself? Right, that's exactly what it does. Where does the data go then? Um, the, well, the data goes to a URL. So the, the way it works is Sakai launches the tool and convinces the tool, um, conv tells the tool where to send its data. So that data might be back to the learning management system, or that data might be sent back to a new learning record store, just a, 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 a server that does nothing but consume these effectively log entries. Very nice, very yeah. nice. So then, and, yeah, we'll be able to finally um, plug in different tools, but keep our own data. Well, yeah, I mean, once that all happens, um, XAPI is sort of the um, precursor to this whole thing. Um, let's see if I can. Uh, Very. Uh, yeah, so, so, so XAPI is kind of a precursor to this, and it is in use, and Sakai even has currently support for XAPI. Um, the problem with XAPI is um, the spec itself is not detailed enough to lead to interoperability. Um, Moodle will produce its XAPI data in one format. Um, uh, Sakai will produce XAPI in a different format. And so XAPI is really good because it'll, it is kind of crude but effective. But then you have to have smart people that look at that data later and go like, oh, let me tweak the Moodle data from this particular instance of Moodle and tweak the Sakai data. And now I can merge them together. But what the, the danger of XAPI is if, because there's not enough specification to know exactly what class it came from and exactly what this, there's data in there that if you're smart, you can write a Python script to pick the data because you look at something and you parse the URL or you do whatever. But in Caliper, it will explicitly tell you this LMS, this class, and this LMS, this teacher, this student did this. 
so that you can build tools that are automatically going to show teachers information, whereas it's difficult in XAPI to do anything beyond show um, professional data miners the data because somebody might see data that doesn't belong to them, whereas Caliper is far more highly specified that makes it possible to build user end user tools rather than administrator tools. So this leads to a philosophical question that Terry Go Lightly just put in the uh, in the chat. Um, since the key is interoperability, and we're talking about Canvas and Blackboard and all of them writing their data the same way to the same spec, she asks, when are the distinctions and advantages of being Sakai or or Moodle or open source? When are those being lost? When when does whatever learning management system you're on for whatever reason you chose it, not be an advantage anymore. I'm um, so, you know, in theory, that's right. But in practice, it's not going to be that way. Um, because um, LMSs have historically not embraced creating an ecosystem. Um, and, and they they don't really do everything that needs to be done to create an ecosystem. And so Moodle kind of implements the standards and they use them and they like to say they've got them and they'll implement them all slowly but surely. And so will Canvas implement them slowly but surely. But what they're going to lack is the philosophical commitment that we have in Sakai to building an ecosystem that is not exclusively about Sakai. So if you build a Poll Anywhere tool, and um, Poll Anywhere turns out to be really important, Canvas is likely to maybe even think about building a competitor Poll Anywhere in their internal product and saying, yeah, you don't even need Poll Anywhere. We got our super poll that we just made. And, and so because they're worried about money and they're worried about being the end all be all product. They tend to want to compete with external tools or diminish the external tools. Sakai is likely the only product in the marketplace that's going to embrace the notion that the external tools are probably the most important innovate, uh, space for innovation over the next five years. And so Sakai, I expect, will continue to be an architectural leader. Um, and Sakai will do this better than anybody else because we're not going to feel like um, a really good external tool as a competitor to us. Um, and so that's why I think it'll be uh, a long time in the future uh, before we have this uh, perfect nirvana where standards are so great. Because it's not just having the standards, it's implementing them with gusto. Um, in Sakai, we're going to do this with gusto because we're, we believe in making a community, even if that community doesn't lead to revenue for Sakai, given that it, Sakai itself gets no revenue other than memberships, um, we don't have to increase revenue by making decisions that are bad for the users, but good for our revenue. Well stated. Uh, we I have time for about, um, excuse me for a second, Laura, I just want to check in and uh, we have time for one or two more questions. So, go ahead. Okay. Laura. I didn't have questions. I thought that was a brilliant uh, capstone quote if I, if, if I take it off the recording. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, there was one question earlier in the chat um, that I'm curious to know the answer to as well, and that is the um, how the LTI standard and or SUGI is going to, um, or is it going to, have any capacity for group awareness? Uh, yes. Uh, once the roster tool comes out, we'll probably have pretty universal group awareness. Um, right now, uh, I don't know if the, our proprietary membership, it's like people have put that in and I don't know if it's in trunk. I should add that to my list of things to think about for Sakai 11 is if there is code that, that already does something about group awareness in our current implementation, I should get that pulled in to Sakai 11. So I'll investigate that. Um, but uh, if I go back to 
um, this roster services that I was, oops, I was talking about, if I was going back to this roster services that I was talking about, that has group awareness in it. And so once, when we implement that, um, we will, we, we, all these tools want to know about groups. And so this is the place where the tools have kind of written down what they think they need from the LMS and form of groups. And we will then uh, end up implementing that. Um, but I will make sure to chase down before Sakai 11 if we have some of our non-standard extensions, if they have some group capabilities that I haven't integrated into trunk, I'll make sure to get that. Fantastic. I'll put I'll, I'll put in a JIRA to at least investigate that before 11. Okay, thank you. Because I think people have done that. I just don't know. Right. Well, um, you know, I, I think this was a fantastic presentation. I learned a lot and um, I'm very excited about uh, the possibilities that all of this opens up for Sakai and for, you know, LMS is everywhere, potentially. Um, and uh, Dr. Chuck, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Any, any last um, questions or comments for Dr. Chuck before we move on? Okay, well, thank you. And you're welcome to stay on the call. Um, yeah, where's the applause generator? Absolutely. We'll, we'll play one. Um, so let's see, I don't know if I... Okay, so uh, next on our agenda is to talk about our um, future meeting themes and topics. And let me go and copy and paste those. So we have, um, next week we have <laughs> e-reservations in Sakai at Dayton. Uh, July 8th we'll have a presentation on Xerti and I know Neil sent out an, a request for questions um, for the Xerti team to help them focus their presentation and we'll have open staff on July 15th. And July 22nd is open. So um, do we have any other suggestions for topics for, for, um, for that? Okay, Jennifer, uh, suggestion for presenters meeting tool, Big Blue Button, maybe talk about their current and future endeavors. Oh. Right. Okay. Well, let's. Uh, we can make inquiry inquiries with them to see at Big Blue Button um, when they're ready to talk about that and uh, what their timeline might be for that. That would be great. Um, we could also always do. Uh, you know, um, if people are interested, they mentioned we mentioned before we could always you know fill up a meeting with reviewing Jiras that are related to teaching and learning. Specifically, um, that's one thing we could do. If people oh, yeah. Are, yeah, so we can, we can always fill in one of, with that if you want. Um, and, uh, you know, we have, I can send out an email reminder about how to tag those jurors in, in, um, in the juror system. I can also, you know, give a few examples of jurors that are out there that people might want to think about. Uh, uh, Louisa says she really likes the Jira five minutes. Yeah, we didn't get it to do that today, but also the other idea is just like throwing a Jira into each meeting, right? So we just do a little chunk at a time. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's helpful too. Um, I do too. I like that as well, Louisa. And um, so we'll have to make a point to include a Jira that we've seen discussion around. Um, anybody have one off the top of their heads? We have a minute.